Welcome to the Quick Flix video series for using generations. I'm Lindy Goodall of Lindy G Embroidery and in this video we'll auto digitize a simple flower and begin modifying it. Over the course of several videos we'll look at several simple ways you can make an auto digitized design more interesting. Now you may have invested in generations for its auto digitizing capabilities but it won't be long before you want to start changing things around. Unfortunately the program also has tools to do that and it's not all that difficult if you know what you're doing. If you're brand new to generations you may find that I go pretty fast and I may not tell you every single click you need to make. If that's the case just get unit one of my eight volume learn to digitize course and work through it. Unit one is a great orientation to generations for the newbie or the novice user or if you haven't used it in a while. Then if you want to learn more you can continue on with the other seven units. We'll start by inserting the image. So go to insert image, navigate to the image, and pick the flower. This flower does come with the Learn to Digitize training series. You won't find it in your regular generations folder. It's a pretty simple image and what we do with this you could probably do with other images. Generations auto detects the type of artwork it is and it sees it as a scanned image. Technically it's not a scanned image. I drew this in Adobe Illustrator and exported it as a high resolution file. Even with vector files, Generations redraws the areas by color and makes a BMP for internal reference. Generations can only read WMF and EMF vector files and it converts those to a 96 DPI BMP. With the high resolution TIFF or PING, it maintains the DPI the way it was saved. So all we need to do now is just click OK. We're not going to do any modification to it. It's a pretty clean image. I'll click Generate. And there's our design. We're enlarged to 255% here. And you can see that it's not a terribly interesting design. I've got 3D turned on. You can see parts that look like fill stitches, parts that look like satin stitches. We got some wonky thing going on there. And then these stitches, some of them will look like satin stitches and others look like runs and they're just kind of jaggy and, and not very pretty. So we're going to clean this up. We're going to start by getting rid of the outlines and make the stitch types a little more consistent. The outlines on the original flower were really thin. Because Generations looks at a design by color, it kind of saw them as gray areas or dark green areas. And so you can see that over here we have a dark green, we have black, and we have two shades of gray. And all of those are these outlines. So we want to get rid of the outlines and the fastest way to do that is select the parts we want and hide them. So I'm just clicking the color and that will select all the frames in that color and then I just click on the little eyeball and now they're all hidden. So now if I press control A and hit delete, let's see what happens. And it got rid of our whole design. So let's undo that. When you auto digitize, Generations groups all of the stitches with the artwork. If parts are grouped with other parts, even if the other parts are hidden, it will delete everything. So we need to ungroup. Unfortunately, when we ungroup on an auto digitized design, it also gets rid of the artwork. I don't know why it does that, but it does. We don't need the artwork anymore anyway. So now let's press Control A and delete and see what happens. And we'll go to the little flyout menu, select all invisible, click the eyeball, and now they're all showing again. Now we do have some issues because we're going to have places where there are little gaps. You can probably see them right here on the veins where the veins on the leaf were. We can really see them if we go into outline mode. And here you can see some of the little thin lines where Generations added satin stitches and it left a void underneath. Generations doesn't stack up stitches. That can be a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing for us is that now that we've gotten rid of our outlines, we're going to have little gaps. But fortunately, it's easy to fix. And all we need to do, we'll select this, 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 and this. All I'm do doing is left clicking on them while I hold down the control key. I'll right click again and choose fill all voids. And there we've filled all the voids. Now we've also filled in the center of our flower. We'll fix that later. 
Notice that it didn't fill this vein, and that's because this vein is not really a void. It's the way the whole leaf is shaped, so we'll need to do some reshaping. But for now, let's just press Generate and see what we have. If we go into 3D, you can still see that we have the same stitch types. This looks like a fill. This looks like a satin. But if we select one of these, we'll see that they are all auto-judge, which you can see down here. So even though I select this one that's looking like a satin, it's an auto-judge. So let's right-click and drag a selection around everything and choose Complex Fill. Now all our areas are Complex Fill. We need to do a little bit more work, so let's go back into Outline Mode. We need to extend our leaves underneath the flower because, see, we're going to have a gap here. See that little space? We also need to fix this. Now fortunately, we don't need to have any great graphic skills to do this. Generations has some nice built-in tools to do this for us. So all we need to do is choose Adjust with New Points. I'm going to click a Start Point, left click, left click an End Point. Now I need to tell it which side. And you can see how it highlights. I want this side. So I'll click it. I'm going to right click for a curve, left click for a straight point. Let's try this one. So we're going to adjust with new points, left click, left click, left click, left, 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 right, right, left. Right click this one, right click again, adjust with new points, left click, left click, left click, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, and generate. Now because I had this last one selected, it doesn't look like this one got updated. I need to deselect all and press generate. And now all our leaves are tucked underneath our flower. Unfortunately, our, our flower center is under there too, so let's move that. And we can either create a void under this, or we can replace this with a perfect circle. So I'm going to left click on Create Circle on the Create bar. Notice that it's a complex fill. We'll drag out a circle. Close that. Right click off. Before we get rid of that, let's make it the same color. I'm going to left click on the blue chip, right click on the orange chip, and now I'm going to get rid of the old orange by control clicking. And there's our flower so far. We still have a full fill circle on top of this full fill area of petals. It's not a good idea to have two stacked full fill objects on top of each other, especially when they're this big. So let's right click on the flower, Go back into Outline Mode. I'll right-click on the flower again, and this time I'll recreate my void. So I'm going to create a void using existing area, and as I move my mouse over the circle, see how it highlights? I just left-click and generate. And now we have a void under there. If I move my circle, you can see it. So still not amazingly interesting, but we've cleaned up a lot of little things and we're ready to make it a little bit more interesting, and we'll do that in future videos. If you'd really like to learn how to digitize and learn how to use generations in the process, get the full Learn to Digitize course. Why just push buttons when you can learn to create any design you want?